So the, the cool way to make Azure DevOps look cool is to actually do robotics with Azure DevOps. And so we have Roy C from the Edge Robotics team at Microsoft with us on the IT show today. Hey, hi everyone, this is Olivier and you're watching the IoT Show. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll talk about ROS on Windows and some of the goodness the Edge Robotics team at Microsoft is working on for you guys, especially around CICD, continuous integration and continuous development and uh, stimulation. Roy C from the Edge Robotics team is joining us on the IoT Show. Roy C, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Olivia. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of course. So tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you? How long have you been at Microsoft? And what is the Edge Robotics team about? Right. So hi, everyone. I'm Roy C. I'm a PM on the Edge Robotics team. I've been in Microsoft for exactly a year now. So I joined last April. Yay! So, welcome! Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, on the Edge Robotic team, uh, we lead all the ROS initiatives at Microsoft. So everything from porting ROS on Windows to creating and maintaining ROS nodes for Azure services, as well as key Windows capabilities that can be applied to robotic scenarios. Uh, we are the beachhead for everything ROS on Microsoft, ROS at Microsoft. Awesome. So we've been saying ROS like about 10 times already. For those who don't know what ROS is, just a little reminder, we already had Lou Amadi on the show before, but it'd be interesting to remind people, what is ROS? Yeah, sure. So for those of you who are new to ROS, ROS stands for the Robot Operating System, and uh, it is an open source middleware, which includes software libraries and tools that enables you to build distributed robotic applications. So if you think about the ROS ecosystem, you can think of it as two layers, uh, on, on the lower layer, you have the ROS core, which provides the uh, publisher subscriber framework and it enables inter process communication. It also provides you with specific libraries and tools so that you can get your robot up and running quickly. And above that, you have your uh, user defined packages. Now, packages is nothing but any useful functionality which is bundled in an easy to consume manner and you can install it over the core ROS foundation. So the biggest advantage of using ROS on your uh, while doing while creating your robotic applications is the fact that uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. So you can pick and choose packages relevant to your use case without having to develop in-house expertise for complex robotics problems like navigation or localization. Uh, there are packages out there that you can include into your application, and ROS is the framework for that. Yeah, but well, it's a it's a big community of of people and enterprises sharing these these modules, these ROS modules. This is used in actual real life industrial enterprise solutions, right? That's right. So you might even be wondering what does ROS have to do with Microsoft? So over the past few years, ROS has been primarily focused on uh, academia and research, but off late for the past few years, it has been transitioning uh, and making its way into enterprises and industrial automation environments. So as this unfolds, we have seen that enterprises who primarily trust the Windows operating system uh, for its security and manageability tenants uh, they prefer to continue to use ROS on Windows rather than having to make a switch. And so we ported ROS 1 on Windows uh, around sometime around last year uh, during build. Uh, so ROS 1, we started with a melodic release. We ported ROS 1 onto the Windows 10 IoT Enterprise and Windows 10 IoT Desktop. Uh, we continue to support the newer releases and maintain the existing uh, releases. Uh, we've got some phenomenal success on this front. So we've got some uh, major ROS-based uh, robot manufacturers adopting ROS on Windows. So we are pleased to announce that ClearPath Robotics and Hyven Corporation, they offers ROS on Windows on their product line. Awesome. So yes, to answer your question, yes, ROS is making its ways into enterprise and industrial-grade production lines. 
This is great. And actually, it makes me think about the topic we want to talk about, because when you say enterprise, it's about enterprise developers. And so we need to provide tooling for these enterprise developers to integrate the robotic side of the development into the enterprise development, right? And so you have to be serious in terms of, uh, you know, continuously integrating and testing and simulating things. So last year, we announced support for um, ROS and VS Code in terms of development. So it gave the cross-platform support and a splendid editor for um, robotics developers. And now you're here to tell us more about the work that's been done around enabling or uh, or making super simple to do CI/CD with Azure DevOps, right? Right. That's right. So we announced the VS Code extension for ROS last year. The VS Code extension for ROS has been like a hit with the ROS community. It makes it really easy for them to go about uh, developing applications on ROS. It gives them a lot of debugging capabilities. And uh, there is also the URDF rendering, which which seems to be a uh, very, uh, uh, I would say, a, a highly used feature in the VS Code extension uh, for ROS. Uh, so now today we want to talk about CI, CD, and continuous simulation. So when you think about ROS, ROS is a great framework for robotic uh, application development. But as a developer, so once you're done with your application development and when, once you're ready to deploy your application into production environments like your factory floor or manufacturing line, there are a few aspects that you need to consider. And this is basic uh, software engineering one-on-one. -on -one. So firstly, you have the testing aspect of it, uh, basically exercising code paths and executing test cases to cover all your code paths. So ROS gives you a lot of uh, tools uh, today within the framework, like you have tools like unit tests, ROS tests that you can use for this. Secondly, you have continuous integration. So if you think about developers working together on a robotic application, uh, they need to incorporate unit tests, uh, integration tests, regression tests to make sure that their code works as expected. So basically every time a developer makes a change, you run automated builds and tests to make sure that there is some level of confidence uh, that nothing is broken. So setting up continuous integration today for ROS application is uh, quite a daunting experience. You first have to set up your CI pipelines. You need to make sure that your, uh, uh, your repositories are set up the right way. Uh, so it's, it's not an easy task today. Uh, we want to add con continuous integration as the subsequent step to uh, continuous. Uh, we wanted to add continuous simulation as a subsequent step to continuous integration because uh, we believe that uh, you might run your unit test, integration test, and your regression test, but how do you ensure that your robot's behavior has not changed with respect to the environment that it's supposed to be deployed in? So that's where yeah. continuous simulation comes into picture. So testing. Yeah, I guess like in, ro in robotics, is a, that's a particular area where in robotics, you cannot afford these very expensive pieces of equipment to have them that's fail it. or get into a wall or hit something else, right? So that's why you need strong, very strong and realistic simulation. That's very true. So testing in simulation is a lot less time consuming and a lot less expensive rather than actually deploying your code onto a robot only to realize that it's not functioning as expected. Awesome. Well, you promised a demo, so we need to switch to that demo and you will show us how it's done and how you integrate with Azure Demo. Right, sounds good. So let's start with the demo. So today there are multiple ways in which you can incorporate CI CD into your ROS application, but I want to show you today how easy it is to use the Azure pipeline service to set up your continuous integration and continuous simulation pipeline for your uh, ROS based applications. So okay. for today, I'm going to be using a project. Uh, it's the project is by the autonomous racing project group. Uh, at the Technical University of Dortmund, and we are using it with their permission. Uh, the reason I picked this project is one, uh, it's about autonomous race car, and autonomous race cars are cool. And uh, secondly, I want to highlight that you can apply CI, CS, and CD uh, to uh, to any of your projects using Azure DevOps with super ease. So let's just get started. So I have my project. Uh, 
the goal of the project as such, the project is for an uh, autonomous race car and the goal of the project is uh, to have a car navigate autonomously across a racetrack and it uses multiple nodes like perception, planning, control, etc. So I have forked this project on my machine. I have uh, on my machine, I had ROS on Windows. I've run it locally. Uh, I've run my test and simulation. Everything looks good. Now I'm all set to set up my CI CD pipeline. Before we get to the CI CS pipeline, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the tests that I want to run. So ROS today provides multiple tools and frameworks for testing. Uh, for this demo, I'll be using the ROS test framework. So ROS test framework uh, enables you to run integration tests by starting up multiple nodes and testing if they're all working well together. So here I have uh, written a ROS test to uh, measure the lap time for the car. Uh, and uh, my threshold is set at uh, 30 seconds. I want to ensure that the car takes, uh, it completes the lap within 30 seconds. So that's the test that I'm going to use uh, as, uh, as a checkpoint in my simulation environment. Okay. So with that said, let's dive in into the Azure pipelines. So, as you know, uh, the Azure Pipeline service is, is the service for you to build, test, and deploy uh, code into any platform or cloud. So I'm going to come here, get started with a new pipeline. I'm going to use my GitHub repo. So I just come in and select that. So I have a YAML file within my repo, so it just shows that. If you quickly look through the YAML file, the YAML uh, talks about bringing up uh, ROS and the packages that it needs to run. So is there, is there a template, is there a template or something developers can can leverage? Yes, we will be publishing a template on our GitHub repo. You can use that to get started as a starting point. Awesome. So now I have my pipeline, which is ready to run. Uh, one other thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I add a build agent uh, to this pipeline. Now, the purpose of this build agent is I would want to bring up my simulation environment within the build agent and run my test in simulation inside that agent. So in order to do that, I, it's very simple. We have already published a VM on the Azure Marketplace. So this VM comes with ROS on it. So I just need to deploy this VM on Azure. So you can go, go ahead and do uh, hit the deploy button. It takes you to the screen. You fill out the details for the VM, provide all the configurations that you need, assign it to a given uh, pipeline, uh, assign it to a given agent pool. So in this case, I'm using a uh, agent pool called as default. And then you also assign it to your project within uh, Azure DevOps. So the project that I'm using is ROS on Win. So we have detailed steps for this on our GitHub repo. So once it's, this is done. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, like people used to Azure DevOps and, and this kind of things like it's they're at home here. That's right. It, it's pretty straightforward. Now, once it's done, it shows up within your the default pool that I was using. Uh, the agent is registered here and ready for me to use. I can go ahead, hit run. It would start off the uh, pipeline for me. It's going to take some. Uh, it's going to take a couple of minutes for the pipeline to complete. So as the pipeline is running, uh, we can go back to the VM that I associated with the agent pool to see the simulation environment coming up and mm -hmm. the test being running there the test run there. So the test is, as I mentioned earlier, to measure the lap time for the car. So in any minute now, we should see the uh, simulation environment pop up here. Tell me what is Gazebo real quick. Sure. So Gazebo is the 3D simulator, and uh, it works in combination with ROS. So uh, ROS gives you the interface to the robot and Gazebo gives you the 3D environment. So using Gazebo, you can uh, you can create the 3D environment for the robot and you can also add additional objects to it. You can add obstacles to it. Uh, Gazebo also comes with a physics engine uh, 
so that you can render aspects like the impact of gravity, the impact of inertia and illumination on a given robot. Awesome. So we are done with our simulation test. Uh, it's time to go back to our pipeline to see the results. So we have our pipeline, it is still running. Uh, it does show some errors, but uh, these are actually warning messages that are being thrown out of ROS, which is captured by the pipeline. Uh, but the pipeline is functioning as expected as of now. Got it. So we can see the results of the test here. It's still calculating. So yes, all the tests have passed, and it shows that, uh, and, and it shows that the tests have, tests have passed. Uh, now another thing that I want to talk about is ROS framework also lets you to collect data system, and it kind of saves it to a file called as the ROS bag. And you can always go back and play back these files at a later point in time, either for investigation or for troubleshooting purposes. So we capture those files in the pipeline and it is available to you right here. So if you look at the related thing, we have a bunch of logs that were collected. So this is all the information. It includes both the sensor data uh, and all the other uh, um, all the other additional information from the robot, which is the messages which were passed from one topic to another. So all this is captured and placed in the raw in the ROS bag files. So you can always download this and uh, replay it in any in, in any simulation environment, and it can be used for troubleshooting uh, and debugging pur uh, purposes. Awesome. Awesome demo, Rossi. That really is a very nice demo, Rossi. Pretty impressive how the integration with Azure DevOps and ROS work. Sure. So Azure DevOps and Pipelines has been around, and I'm sure developers have already played around with them. But I think this little tweak on how you can include the simulation piece into your CI pipeline is super critical when it comes to robotic application development. Definitely. It's no longer CI CD now. It's like CI CD CS, right? That's Yes. We're inventing, we're coining a new term here. I love it. Right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, guys, if you want to learn more about uh, ROS on Windows, you can go to aka.ms slash ROS, R-O-S, and there's going to be plenty of information for developers down there, right, Rosie? That's right. So that's our landing page. We are always updating that page with the latest happenings on our team. So feel free to jump in and uh, watch out for the latest case studies and blogs that we put out there. Uh, we would also have announcements for upcoming webinars, so be sure to be tuned in and uh, stay in touch. Well, thanks again, Rosie, and, and for you guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you soon again on the IoT Show, and do not forget to subscribe as well. Bye.